Let's work on the one that is almost done. Michael! Medium. Hello and welcome to another session with the Little Wolf Knits. I am Brianna and I am the de designer, dyer, and human behind the Little Wolf Knits. And this is session 25. I believe it's been a minute since I'm on here, but it is January 1st, 2024. I have to say it feels like it's been 2024 for a little bit, or I've gotten used to saying it. Um, I haven't gotten mixed up yet. Maybe I was ready for 2023 to be over. But anyway, Vlogmas is officially over. And I am back to podcasting in case you have never seen any of my sessions, which are my weekly, bi-weekly, sometimes they don't happen for a few months at a time, podcasts. Um, you could go check them out. I'll leave them in the little, maybe it's over there, info bar. <laughs> um, and in case you are wondering what I've been up to in the last two or three weeks since you've seen me, and you haven't checked out my Vlogmas, you could go find it somewhere. I will leave links to the podcast playlist and the Vlogmas playlist down below. Um, like I said, it is January 1st. It is cozy. I am in a, a cozy little outfit here. I almost didn't jump in to do this because all I want to do is sit and knit and actually watch some Vlogmas and continue catching up but it has been so long and there's so much to show you so I figured let me just hop in and chat about what I've been doing yarn wise the last few weeks before we get started jumping in I will tell you a little bit about what I'm wearing oh you're not really going to be able to see this well but I am wearing my beachcomber flares it is a design by me that came out maybe I want to say in April or May, not of this year, I think of the year before. Super fun um, flared pant, fold over waistband, very similar to a yoga pant. Oh goodness, and the yarn on these. Okay, wait, I think I actually might know. I think this is just like Gwen and Gavin, which is a Gilmore Girls colorway. I think this is geyser number five, maybe? From my From the Open Road colorway, I think this third one is I'm Dying Inside from Schitt's Creek. And then this is Skinny Dipping, which is a fun tonal. This was probably a misfit, which is usually what I keep for myself because there's little like white specks in here. But it is a super giant flare. I love it so much. And they're super cozy house pants for when I'm just hanging out or chatting with y'all. I have a candle burning here and I'm nervous. It is from Wax and Wool um, and is actually the solstice candle from last year from I guess Cozy Fuzzy Yarn Co. Maybe last year or Nicole Huloco. I don't remember hers having a candle in it, but maybe it did. It's from last year. It smells wonderful. And that's what's happening to set the scene here. Okay. I don't, I honestly, I don't want to be too chatty. I have a Zoom with my Wolfpack members in about an hour. So I want to be concise here and get this done. So let's jump into what has come off my needle since last time we chatted. Let's talk about maybe what was done first because it is so amazing. And if you've watched Vlogmas, you've seen me wear it at least two or three, two times, but maybe three times. This is my cold shoulder styled sweater and it's being called the C Street Sweater. C Street Sweater. Um, and it is in Snickerdoodles. I love this colorway so much. And it's super cute, mock neck design. 
ribbing, shoulder cutouts, long sleeve. It is a full length. I made mine to a full length and I love it. And I am just wearing the heck out of this already. I think last time we chatted, I've now taken the progress keepers off because I've worn it many times. I think I was on the second sleeve. I was maybe just starting the second sleeve and had finished the first and they're now both done. They're beautiful. I love how the sleeve always pulls a little bit differently than the body. Um, this is all the same dye lot, same pan. So that is just the difference in gauge and um, stitches, circumference that you're working with. And I just think it's so cool. So sometimes you're in pools, sometimes it doesn't. And there's not much you can do to control it. But you'll see throughout the sleeve as I just decrease one or two stitches, look how it changes, right? Like it was pooling and then it pulls differently. So I just think it's super cool. I love this. I think this is going to be my March design. Um, and it's going to go into testing soon, in about two weeks or so. So keep an eye on this. If you like it, it is fingering weight. This is like I said, snickerdoodles on my sunfish base. And I'm really, really, really excited about it. That is FO number one. FO number two were Christmas socks for Michael. I will say fair warning, both of the next things I'm going to show you have been worn for the last week or so. On or off, you can hear Michael downstairs. Um, without being washed. So they don't smell, <laughs> but they're like not, they're a little stretched out and whatnot. But these are Michael's, one of Michael's Christmas gifts, his Christmas socks in the World Champs colorway that was a collaboration with Kent and Natalie of Nitty Natty. And it was super fun. It was dyed up, it was Kent's yarn idea that I helped him bring to life. Um, it's still available in the shop, although the first pre-order has shipped and is, I think, arrived to everyone who ordered it. Um, there will be a giveaway for this sometime soon, so make sure you're following me, make sure you're following Natalie, and stay tuned for a giveaway for a sock blank of this colorway. So excited, um, but yeah. These are Michael's. I did a three by one rib for him this time because sometimes he said his, his leg stretches out a bit and I thought maybe ribbing would help. Um, just like rip a little bit more and it sounds like it has not helped. It has actually maybe made things worse because it has stretched a bit too much. I thought maybe they were getting loose because they were stretching too much, pulling. Um, I think his leg just might need a few less stitches. The feet fit him really well, so I think what I'm going to do next time around is take maybe four stitches off of his leg and see how that is, and then go from there. He loves them. He's worn them lots. Again, look how the pulling changes at different stitch counts. So stinking cool. FO number two. Okay, oh, this one's so good. Last but not least, FO number three my advent socks spoiler alert sorry it's november it's it's not november it's january 1st if you've avoided these i'm impressed because i've shown them every single day on block miss and also everyone has shown them but these were my advent socks that i made for myself with a 24 day striping sock set i actually just got the skein and used my own bear yarn for the contrasting color from the Cozy Knitter. So much fun. This is the first year she did a fade like this. And I just, I love it. I love how there were some differences between like, these are so subtle and so smooth. And then some that were a little bit more obvious, but I just, I love them. I literally wore them for days and I was like, okay, this is gross. I think I need to take them off. And then I did an undyed toe and cuff. I realized that for me, if I do 
an, a, a contrasting heel. The leg of the sock is a little bit longer than I like it to be. About, let's see, um, one, two, two and a half colors. Yep, that's about right. About a little less than maybe an inch. Longer than I like, so I've decided. I think last year I decided to just continue through the heel and I love the way it fits. I did the same thing for Sophia last, maybe I didn't, I have to ask her. Her foot is a lot bigger than mine. I am a four and a half and she is an eight. So maybe I did a, a contrasting heel for hers, but I love it so much. So, so much. And I decided, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I will talk about um, what's next, what's coming up on the needles and all of that in a little bit. I feel like I kind of skipped admin. So I guess we'll do FOs. I'll go into whips. Then we'll do what's coming next, acquisitions, admin, yarn, things, Yarn things to look out for in the shop, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Right now, we'll work on whips. Let's start on the one that is... Sorry, I just hit the table with the camera on it. Let's work on the one that is almost done. Michael! Can you hear him? Um, okay, this one is in a bag. From a finch's nest. This is the lighter snow day fabric. Oh, that's funny. Both of my bags I'm using right now. My trusty hair clip. You always have to have at least one on a knitting bag that you're bringing along with you because you never know when you're going to need it. But, oh, it smells so good because I have refresh from tuft woolens in here. Upside down. Tuft woolens. And it just smells amazing. And... And they have a little bit of yarn left. So I actually ran out of yarn, this gray yarn. Um, Michael? Uh, yeah. Michael? Uh, what? You're being very loud and also cursing. Okay, I ran out of gray yarn. At some point, when I was working on this, I don't even know, you know what? Oh my gosh, you haven't even seen this. I have not even started this because I started this a week before Christmas. So I made a sweater for my nephew um, and it is not completely done, as you will see. Uh, like a week before Christmas, he asked me to make him a sweatshirt to match Michael and Michael's sweatshirt. And I was like, that's crazy, I can't do it. But I was like, I'm gonna try. And I almost did it. I would have actually finished, I believe. So, okay, time out, time out, time out. This is the mini Montrealer Designs by Dells. I don't feel so confident in that. I need, I will put it down here. Um, but I had purchased it a long time ago to make him a sweatshirt. And I was going to do it for his birthday this year. We ended up getting him another gift, so I didn't do it. And then when he asked me for one, and he asked me for one that was exactly like what I had planned to make him with his mom, which was hilarious. So I was like, all right, I have to make one. So this main color is fog on my 420 base and this blue was actually leftovers from my Alpine Glow, also on my 420 base. It was like a tonal navy and I had exactly what I thought would be good. I think it was like 30 or 40, maybe 40 grams. I was like, that'll be perfect. That's what he wants for the contrasting. I went ahead, I did the body, I finished, I did the pocket. I did all of this in like a week. The sleeves, I did like a sleeve a day, cranked it out, and got to the hood. Um, 
by Christmas Eve, and I was seeing him on Christmas Eve, and I finished to the shaping, pretty much to seaming the top of this, and I ran out of yarn. I knew I was going to run out of yarn, but I didn't think I was going to run out of yarn at that point. I thought I would maybe do the trim for the pockets and the hood and the drawstring a different color. But when that happened, I said, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I have my 420 base and 20 gram minis. I'm just going to dye up a mini for myself. Um, and I think the, like the, it actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't know, this lighting is bad. Oh no, maybe you can see where it changes. It's okay, cause it's just the hood trim. Like I said, um, so you're not really going to be able to tell, but I dyed this up and I worked this little trim that you use to encapsulate the drawstring. Uh, I didn't have an iCord maker with me and I might be trying with Cordsmith. I don't know if I want to mess around with something new for this because I don't have a lot of yarn to play with. I have about 10 or 11 grams of each color ray. I'm going to weigh them and see what I have more of. I I don't know, I can't tell. This is just like looser because it was a larger cake. Whatever I have more of is going to go to the pocket trims and then the other one is going to be from the drawstring and I'm gonna make some sort of backward drawstring for that. Um, but that's all I have left. I could have finished it. I need to seam this and then drawstring. But I put it on hold for this weekend because I have a design that I want to get into testing this week. And I'm not going home until this weekend to see CJ. So I really wanted to prioritize my design. I told CJ it wasn't done. And I told him that this is what happens when you get handmade gifts. And he understood. And he was like, but when will I have it? I told him. He said, in the next two months, I said, I will get this to you in the next two weeks. So I told him I'd get it to him this weekend. The plan is to finish it. There's not that much left to do. Whip number one. Whip number two, I've alluded to, I have another hair clip on another bag. From this one is from a Puff Stitch. That's the little logo there. I don't know if you could see it. And this is the same fabric <laughs> in navy, and this is in like a light aqua. I guess I liked it. How hilarious is that? Um, but in here, oh, Christmas gift. In here is a design that could have, should have, would have been done. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it, Makes me grumpy, and I talked about it on Vlogmas, but I messed up the sleeve. This was the third time knitting this sleeve, and it worked. So this is a really cool distressed, like, boxy design. I'm going to call it the D Street sweater. D for distressed, and it has, like, all these really cool drop stitches. There's some over here. Um, there's some on the sleeve. And down by the cuff, I think it's super cute. And I'm working on the second sleeve of this. Like I said, should have been done. It isn't. But now I'm hoping that I will finish the second sleeve of this by today. And this is in my yarn as well. Shocker. Um, this is my molasses colorway from the cookie collection and this is on my opti base which is my worsted base i don't use it often but it is so beautiful like dyeing it working it up knitting with it squishing it it's really nice so it's lovely to be working with it i'm going to pick up for a neckband here after i do the sleeves and then work down for the body um, and yeah, like I said, I'd love to have this one into testing by the end of this week. So if you are not on my newsletter already, get on my newsletter. And there are no promises that the testing call actually goes out to the newsletter because it goes to my Wolfpack members first. 
Sometimes, it doesn't happen often, but sometimes the wolf pack actually fills up the testing call before it even goes out to the newsletter. And that's just how it rolls. But if it doesn't fill up, then it goes to the newsletter. If it doesn't fill up, then it'll go to Instagram. Um, so if you want to get in on any of my tests, make sure to at least get on my newsletter. But if you've been thinking about joining the wolf pack and you're not sure, that might just be the one extra thing that tips you into joining for this new first quarter of 2024. But I love this. I'm super excited. I'm loving how it's fitting. I'm loving the colorway. And there might be something exciting that this colorway is a little teaser for. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yes, I'm chugging away on that, hoping to get the sleeve done today. Neckband tomorrow, body by Wednesday. That would be lovely. Okay, whip number three-ish. Yeah, I'll do 3.5. That will then bring us into, maybe we'll go things in the shop. Things I plan to work on acquisitions. That's the order. There's a reason, I promise. So, we have some spinning to talk about. I am getting down to the end of this. I split this melanated mo boho bay braid that you've seen in every podcast, I think, since Ryan Beck um, in half. And I'm getting down to the end of it. I would love to finish this by this week, and it's on my Bosworth Midi Spindle. So beautiful. Um, yeah, spinning away. Loving it. I was going to start spinning for y'all, but I'm not. Loving it. Merino. It's a one of a kind. Sorry. But I'm really excited, and I don't know when I spoke about this. I was thinking about playing around with color and maybe just spinning end to end in each half of the braid. But I decided I'm going to fractal spin this one. I don't know if I've shared that because I got some new spindles that I acquired during Vlogmas. I won't show them. You'll see them when there's stuff to see on them. Um, or you could go check them out in Blockbus. But that is my spinning whip. My drop spindle that I'm using for 100 days of spindle spinning. And I'm going to call this my half. Mm, pink peppermint. Tough woolens. Smells good. <gasps> Michael! Oh, yay! I thought I had lost my two favorite stitch markers and my two needle stoppers. And I was like, I remember putting them in my bag. I don't know how I lost them. I was so upset. And I found them. I did put them in my bag, but I put them in my spindle bag. Oh, yes. Okay. Awesome. Wow. That's so exciting. Okay. Spindle. Spin number two and acquisition is my spindle, my bobbin drop spindle from Carrie Cherry. Let me see. It basically is wooden and it has this removable bobbin that goes onto a stick and becomes a drop spindle. Oops. Oh no. I push the fiber up into it. Let's just pull it back out because I had it wrapped around the hook. So you slip it on. I actually got four of these bobbins, which is perfect so that I can fill them up and then apply straight from these. But what is on it, you'll see, is an undyed fine. I think it's 19 micron superwash merino. I'm saying super wash because I'm not sure because I am sampling fibers. 
I'm sampling fibers. I'm just gonna leave it at that. And I want to, of the little fiber bump that I got, um, I'm going to split it into, uh, I'm gonna take about one quarter, spin it on a spindle, see how it feels, maybe chain ply it, see how the yarn feels, one quarter and spin it on a wheel, do the same thing, and then I'm gonna take the other half and dye it up and see how it takes dye. I'm really excited. For this and I guess this will take us into our exciting new things coming to the shop in 2024 section of the podcast so in case you're also this is a, a little box bag from nomadic yarns that my sister got for me many moons ago and it's beautiful okay Things coming to the shop, I'm so excited to tell you about. First and foremost, since we're on the topic of fiber, let's just start there. I am sampling fibers, hopefully to dye in the shop and have as a base that will be available for all of my colorways. Um, hopefully I'll have several fiber bases, so Thinking uh, merino, thinking maybe a, a a merino silk, thinking about maybe like a Falkland or BFL or Cormo I haven't played with. Basically, I'm looking into a lot of fibers and um, they're definitely going to be coming to the shop as long as I can figure out how to dye them, but I cannot, cannot wait for that. So if you're interested in seeing what that's all about, if you're interested in seeing the journey and behind the scenes, we're definitely going to be spending a lot of time in the wolf pack exploring that together. Um, if you're not and you're just here to buy stuff, keep an eye out, get on my newsletter. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at the little wolf knits. Um, and check out my shop down in the description. It'll be linked um, to see when that might be dropping. Other cool things happening. I talked a little bit about the Wolf Pack. A new quarter is starting. We're doing really fun things. We decided we're going to continue our yoga challenge where we do yoga every single day together. We'll all be doing our yoga with Adrian. Um, flow, which is actually what's happening this month that she's releasing day by day. So that's really exciting. Um, we'll be having monthly Zoom meetings. We'll have a we have like our knit night zoom meetings we have a book club discussion every month we actually have one today which is why i'm trying to be a little quicker with this podcast um there may or may not even be a little movie calendar watch along for february if you like rom-coms and romance movies and nothing super super cheesy like i'm not like hallmark lifetime movie but i love like He's just not that into you and Sex in the City and some of those movies that are probably terrible movies, but you know, nostalgic. So that'll be really fun. And then we have some special prizes that we'll be doing for our knit along for the first quarter of this year. So as a Wolfpack member, you get extra prizes, extra drawings, chatter threads, in addition to the 24 seven chatter threads that we have about any and everything else. Um, you get extra prize drawings for our Mal. You get access to colorways, test knits, um, before everyone else, collection drops, anything you could think the Wolfpack hears about at first. Not only do they get access to it, but they also are sometimes involved in the planning, preparation, behind the scenes, getting to help me make decisions, which is really, really fun. And we're having a retreat in February, and I'm so excited to get together as a group and meet these amazing makers, and I'm just really, really, really excited about it. Um... So that's some Wolfpack things. Let's talk maybe then a little bit about, I guess I'm kind of mis mixing admin what's coming in the shop, but that's okay. So we are officially 
launching, we have launched actually yesterday, uh, our second annual Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mal. Uh, it's a really fun Mal make along where you knit or crochet anything to keep your peaks up top or your cheeks down low, cozy and comfy. Um, basically any garments, so tops, bottoms, dresses, sweaters, uh, I'm not super strict, so a blanket that would cover the cheeks and the peaks um, could work. Pretty much any larger garment, so this isn't necessarily for accessories, shawls, hats, socks, things like that, but larger garments, and it started on January January. Started on December 31st and it is running through March 31st of this year. We're going to have really fun prizes and drawings throughout from Instagram using the hashtag Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mal 2024. And like I said, the Wolf Pack will have some extra entries, some Zooms where we do like show and tells, talk about what we're making, our finished products, all of that stuff. Um, and even if you're not in the wolf pack, but you start and finish any garment or object that um, meets the criteria for this mal, I have a Google form linked. It's already there in my Instagram where you could submit an entry, including photos, information about your make that it was either a pattern of mine, like one of my designs, or you made someone else's design, but you use Little Wolf Knits yarn. Those will also be entered to win an extra prize. So super excited about that. Can't wait to see what everyone is making. I will be making lots of things, including my D Street top. I will have a Radvent cardigan on the needles. I'll have a few other designs. You might see something similar to these if you like DK. <laughs> just saying um spoiler alert ah. but yeah lots of really fun stuff i'm going to be participating i hope you will join us in any way that you can um even if you don't finish and you just want to cast on or you never made a pair of pants or you've never made a sweater and you want to cast on a second half sweatshirt or a bonfire sweater and you want to try brioche or challenge yourself to do something new, it is the perfect opportunity to do so. Super excited about that. I'll also share a little bit about yarn clubs that are coming in the shop in 2024. First and foremost, we will have two monthly yarn or yarn and charm clubs throughout the entirety of 2024. The first six months will be a mix of my travel inspired club from the open road where I wrap up my final road trip that I took um, with my friend and that will run the first six months of the year like I said. So until June, really exciting colorways coming. We're going to be in the southwest part of the country so think Arizona, Antelope Canyon, Grand Canyon, Utah, Zion, um, California. Lots of really cool stuff before we wrap up with a absolute favorite of mine. And then the first two quarters, we're going to continue quarterly clubs like we have in the past. So that means every three months, we'll change to a new theme or a new fandom. And each of those three months you can subscribe to or just choose to opt into um, a club on a monthly basis after you see the colorway. I'm dropping little hints here. But we're going to have some really exciting fandoms, some returners that people have loved, like Gilmore Girls, Schitt's Creek, and Friends. And we're going to add some new ones to the mix, like Ted Lasso, New Girl, and How I Met Your Mother. I'm really excited to be able to bring six different themes to you this year. And part of that is because the From the Open Road Club is coming to an end, at least for now. So that means quarters one and quarters two of this year will have a From the Open Road Club and a fandom club. And then in the 
third and fourth quarter of this year, we'll have two fandom clubs running at the same time. So super, super excited for those. And I have been building palettes and setting up listings and I cannot wait for y'all to see them. And this year we're running things a little bit differently because in the past, all of these clubs have always been mystery clubs where I show you the inspiration and the palette I've created from the inspiration, but you don't see the yarn until it gets to your hands, <laughs> until you actually get it. That's when you see the yarn. This year, I have heard folks, there are a bunch of you who love surprises. There are a bunch of you who don't. And it sounds like even for the people who love surprises, they would still opt into a club that they could see the yarn because they were like, it's still a surprise when you get it and see it in person. So for the first time, all of these clubs that I'm talking about, you're going to see the yarn when you purchase it. It won't be a mystery, which is really exciting. It's gonna have to shift my schedule a little bit and how I do things, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I actually have some of the yarns. Oh, I should have brought them. I have some of the yarn inside. They're not wound up yet, but keep an eye. Make sure you're on my newsletter. Make sure you're following me on Instagram if you want to see those when they go live. So excited. So, so, so excited for this. what this year brings. Last thing I will say about the shop, in addition to our monthly clubs, we're going to continue to do, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, countdowns, advents, boxes throughout the year. I'm doing one in July, which I have done in the past. I didn't do this past year with my wedding, but I will be doing one again this year. I will be doing one in October and I will be doing one in December. As per usual, really excited about those three. And then I realized that there's one happening almost every quarter, right? Winter, fall, summer, but there wasn't really one happening in the beginning of the year. And I got to chatting with my friend and fellow artist, Wendy, a Very Warm Stripes, and we decided we were going to put together a little Valentine-inspired box for y'all. So, so, so excited about this. I'm still not exactly sure how it's going to work. There are going to be goodies or gifts that will come together to make a little care package, whether it's for you, whether you buy it for a yarny friend, whether you ask for it from someone special in your life and want to make sure you're getting something you love, whether you want to treat yourself to a little like Galentine's love, um, there will be some goodies. So thanks, stitch markers, candles, lip balm, soaps, things like that. And then there will be options to add yarn. I don't know if it's gonna be in separate listings or the same listings or what it's going to look like, but there are three clubs Three different colorways, skeins that will all be so perfect for a Valentine's Day cast on. Um, you could get one, you could get all of them, you could get multiples, you could get whatever you want, but there's going to be some listing. There's going to be a Friends inspired colorway, a Gilmore Girl inspired colorway, and a Travel inspired colorway that all perfectly fit this theme of Valentine's Day. And it is a pre-order that will be live by the time this goes up. By the time this goes up, the pre-order will be live and available. So I guess you can't tell me what you think I should do because I'll have figured it out already. And the pre-order will stay open through <coughs> January 15th. So through that Monday, the pre-order will stay open. Then they're going to close because we will have all the things to make. And they're going to ship out by the end of January to get to you by the beginning of February before Valentine's Day for a Valentine's Day cast on, or I guess if you get it early, a Valentine's Day project. And I am so, so, so excited about adding this to the shop. I feel so inspired seeing the colorways already done and I hope that you love them as much as we do. So those are all the cool things coming to the shop. I feel like that was a lot. I usually don't have that much to say, but it is a new year and there's lots to chat about. Um, so I'll talk really briefly about things I've acquired since we chatted and things to do or that I'll be working on in the next little bit here. I really just have one thing I 
want to talk about and show you and another thing I'll mention. So acquisitions, the only things I have acquired that I have not showed you are, are is it, there are multiple items, but they came together as a gift from a dear friend. In the Wolf Pack, we did a gift exchange um, in December and it was so, so, so lovely. I gushed about it on Vlogmas. I love this group of humans and look what my dear friend Susan got me. Um, she knows I am newly obsessed with spinning. Let me show you so you can see. Um, both of these are from Malabrigo and the base or fiber is called Noob. It is roving hand dyed, 100% pure merino wool. It says roving, but I think this is top combed top can someone help me understand the difference because I feel like I do and I and if I do it means that people just um, misuse the term but maybe I'm wrong but this one is Arco Iris and this one is Diana. Oh. Wow, that's good. They're both so good. The plan is to spin these and ply them together. And I'm really excited about it. I don't know what it's going to become, but I love it so much. And I also have, which I found, um, these adorable little needle stoppers, stitch, yeah, needle, you know, there's a little hole that you put your needles in. Um, that are snowflakes from House of Yarn because my friend is down in Tennessee, which I'm so jealous about. But this was an amazing gift and I still can't get over how beautiful it is. That's all I'm going to show for acquisitions. And then the last thing I'll show is one thing to work on. This is really funny. If you watch Vlogmas, you've seen this already. I gifted my mom two handmade items this Christmas. One was a really cute, like, boxy vest that I made a long time ago using thick and quick yarn and this is a sweater using the same yarn that I said mom this is your sweater she was like no it isn't I'm like yes I gave this to you years ago and you must have left it at my house she's like not a chance I love it so much if you gave me that I would have been wearing it Sophia's like no you definitely had it I remember I remember you having it and I'm like yeah She's like, no, 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 but I'll take it. So I give it to her. She puts it on, and one of the sleeves is way longer than the other. She likes the longer, looser sleeve, which is this one. And this one, I, I don't know what happened. This is long before I knew about designing or anything like that. So I'm assuming I have to count and see if I picked up less stitches, if I decreased too much on this one I don't even see where my decreases are oh no oh no oh no this is seamed okay that's okay you know what I think I'm gonna do that changes my plan I was going to take off some of the length in the back because I don't like how much longer the back is I might still do that and add it to the shorter sleeve, but because they're seamed, I'm going to frog the sleeves. I'm going to pick up and make sure they are knit the same. And then mom is obsessed with this and really wants it. So I want to do that soon because I want her to be able to wear it. I'm pretty sure I use, I think they might be US 17 needles. I have pink needles that I'm 99% sure I use for this. Um, and if not, the sleeves will be a different gauge in the body. And that'll be okay since I'm taking both off now. So there we go. But that is what I'll be working on come January. Once this design is finished, I'm really going to get into spinning, back into spinning, not just on my spindle, but on my wheel, on my Hanson right there. Um, and I have acquired, I'm looking at it over there, something really exciting for that. But I'll talk about it when I use it. And I'm going to work on my Radvent cardigan and get an advent project knocked out at the beginning of the year. 
I'm also realizing that since I'm in like the wintry Christmas mood, I want to work on at least one gift a month throughout this coming year. So when I get to the holiday season at the end of the year, I have gifts already made. I did it a little bit this year and it worked really well. I'm glad I did because I got to continue knitting for myself through October, November, and December when I wanted to. And I didn't have that many gift knits to do. So I'll be doing a few different things like using some of my hand spun um, yarn that I've created these little um, bits of yarn here um, from getting spindles when they give you like little bumps of fiber and making some Christmas ornaments. I'm going to make some socks for people in my life. I'm going to make a hat for Michael since he's so knit worthy. And yeah, just make this year a really cozy year. I don't know what I did here. I like I'm messing this up. I want to make this year a really cozy year. Um, every year I choose a word for the year that I really want to try and to embody or embrace. Um, it's usually not a word that's a goal that I can achieve, but a word that is a bit more grounded in a quality or a trait or value that I can try and live by. And this year, my word is going to be ease, which is going to be really interesting. If y'all know me, you know that this slowing down, being easy, with myself, with the things I'm working on, doesn't always come naturally. So it is going to be a bit of a challenge, but I am looking forward to it now that I have the space in my life and my businesses to do so. And I hope that y'all can join me, keep me accountable. Let me know below if you choose a word or a phrase or a theme for your year, if you set goals for yourself for the new year, um, and maybe we can keep each other accountable as we go. Let me know below if you're casting on anything for the Cozy Cheeks and Peaks and Cheeks Mal 2024. If you have any exciting things that you're planning to cast on and work up for yourself, let me know if there are any yarn clubs or boxes that are coming that you're excited about. Or if there are any general things that you would like to see in the shop or even on this channel um, for the Little Wolf Knits. Because I'm really, really looking forward to this year and what we as a team are going to come up with together. I've been chatting for a long time, so I'm going to sign off now. And hopefully see you soon we can't make this thing a little bit more regular now that Vlogmas is over. Okay, take care of each other and until next time.